Okay, this is step one, undoing the fan screws. One, two, three. Just loosen those. That one fell inside, I'll get out in a second. Don't panic. Just loosen those. That one there. Let's get a pair of tweezers, wherever they are. There they are. There's that screw. Actually, it's best to shake the back upside down to get it out. There we go. That's that out. That's always one, isn't there? So, put that screw back into the hole on the fan. Before, I must say, before you start doing this, just you have to earth yourself by touching a computer case like that. Otherwise, you'll get static build up. So, that's the fan done. Lift the fan out. Like that. Very carefully. And then disconnect the fan connector down there. You see that plug? So, lift that with a pry tool. Just lift it up. And that's the fan out of the way. So that's the next step coming up. Cheers! Okay, we're now going to remove these three 2mm hex screws. One, two, three. As you see on the video, he's doing on the video. Anyway, so you're going to remove those. Quite stiff, but the feel of it. That's one. That's two. And the last one at the bottom. The final frontier. <laughs> That's that one done. Okay, next step coming up soon. Bye. The step is to remove these two Torx T8 screws. One here and one here. Do it very carefully not to scratch them. Get the head in the, in the screw very carefully. Then, gosh, they're tight, they are. Anyway, I'll do I'll come back in a minute. They're quite tight. I don't want to mess that up, so back in a minute. So they're out now. They're undone. Lift those out. There we go. Camera won't focus anyway. That's the screws for the, the Bluetooth Wi-Fi cover. There we go and I'll see you in the next step. Okay, I'm now going to lift up the uh, airport antenna grate, which is pull up like that. And you lift it out. So I'll do that and come back. Bye bye. So the Bluetooth airport antenna grate is now lifted. And you'll see down in there the uh, antenna cable goes down under the little cover there. I don't know if you can see that. That is just there. So, under that flap, you'll see the connector. Very carefully. Lift that up. You see the connector there? Little gold connector. So, we're going to lift that out now. See in a sec. Okay, you can now see the antenna grate is out. Along it, with it, the uh, antenna cable, the little connector there. Tiny little, I think that's called an SMA connector. That's come out of that area there, under that flap, which you can see just under there. Little gold connector. Anyway, that's that done, and time for the next step. Time to remove the fan cowling, which is uh, this black part here, this black area, which is like the fan ducting. 
the, the, the direct all the air towards the back of the Mac it comes out there in that slot. So there's one screw and it's quite a small one, which is just there. So I'll do that now. Undo that. Hope you can see that all right. I'm more concentrated actually getting the map done properly, not actually visibility for the viewer. So that screw's undone. I'll lift that out. A pair of tweezers. That's that out. And get the fan cowling and lift it out. Ground myself first, make sure it's doubly grounded. Okay, I'll use both hands this, I'll come back in a minute when it's done. Okay, bye bye. Cowling is now out, which was in there, this area here, from here to here. There's the cowling, which conduct, which uh, carries the air down to the bottom. Um, where's the cowling? Where's the bit that the cowling screw goes into? Can't see that. There should be a hole. Oh, it must go in there. That um, torque screw you can see there, this one here, must have a double must have a double thread in the head. Hmm. Must have like a head, head head of its own, but a smaller thread inside to receive the screw from the cowling. Clever. See, so the next part is to remove this little screw here, near the rear of the logic board. So that's going to come out now. I'm probably film that. It's quite easy to do. Get the uh, seat the driver in properly. That's coming out easily. There we go. I'm going to put that over to one side, and then I'll see you in a second. Very, very prudent idea to keep the screws stuck to a bit of paper with blue tack, um, just on the, laying on the side. This is the screw from the logic board just there, the uh, silver hole on the left, this one here, it's basically, don't want to lose that screw, cause that's, a, that's a lone screw, so that's, I'm going to mark that now as logic back, there we go, see you soon. Next step is very important, this is the SATA connector for the existing factory hard drive, this little black thing here, so just lift that up, very carefully with a pry tool, very simple to lift up. That's it, that's done. It's lifted now. And the next step will be coming in a second. Cheers! Is to use this U shaped piece of metal here supplied with the data doubler kit called the logic board removal tool. So, what you do, you put that inside here, position the camera, and there. Just may have to stretch it a little bit. There we go. That's now in there. slide the logic board back a bit. I won't do that with the camera on, I'll come back when it's done. So that's in those two holes and then you pull back this direction very gently. So is that. Okay the next step is to remove this little uh, infrared uh, module connector here by lifting it up. So I lift it up and come back because it's quite fragile. That's just that little connector there, the black connector in the middle. The logic board is coming out. I've got the pry tool, sorry not the pry tool, the logic board removal tool in the two holes engaged. I'm gradually easing out very carefully and then I'll disconnect the the um, infrared module board, the black connector here. Sorry, there. Couldn't see because the camera was in the way. So I'll carry on doing that and I'll be back soon. See that little module is Sorry, that uh, infrared module connector is, is now loose. So I'm going to move the logic board right out now. Back soon. Logic board's come out even more. Okay. Logic board's out even more. There's the uh, infrared cable there. And there's a the power supply cable, which I'm now going to remove. And then take the logic board right out of the machine, out the back. So I'll see you soon. This is quite fragile. I don't want to mess this one up. So I'll be off camera for a while and come back. Bye bye.
Okay, so the power supply connector is now completely removed from the socket. I'm going to slide the logic board right out of the machine. It looks scary, doesn't it? It's not, believe me. Let's just pull it out. It comes right out. Right, right out of the machine. Slide it out carefully. There we go. Completely free. That is your logic board. And there's your backup battery. There you go. That is what's there's a the drive you see. That's what's coming out next. That's your logic board. Look after that with very, very careful hands. So you see. There we're making some progress now. There's the SATA connector for the hard drive. And pull the hard drive out of the machine. Just lift it and pull it. That's your hard drive, you see. 5400 RPM, it's a Hitachi one. Uh, March 2014, so very new. Let's put that to one side and we'll carry on. See you soon. To remove the two T6 screws, one here and one here, that, remove, that, that holds the power supply in the uh, hard drive bracket in place. So remove those. One, very careful these screws, I want to strip the head, so be very very careful, not too careful, not too over cautious, just unscrew them, un unscrew them confidently but uh, careful the heads. So there we go, next step coming up is to remove this little uh, power socket retaining clip here little silver thing here. Pull that to the left. So I'll do that now and I'll be back in a second. Gosh that was easy. There it is. That was very easy. Just pulled it to the left and it came out. That's that. So I put it over there. All the bits. And then you will turn this turn this power connector anti-clockwise they say. And then the power supply will come out out this way at the back. So back soon. Here's the power supply. The camera focus. Uh, pull it out carefully. That's just coming all the way out, you see. There's your power supply connector there. I'll be out back in a second. It's coming out. There we go. That's the power supply for the whole Mac Mini. You're right, it's tiny. Look at it. It's absolutely a work of art, that is. Let's get a look at the serial number, shall we? 6140515 China. There's your serial number. I'm not sure if that's a serial number for the power supply or the actual Mac. There's the label. There's the connector. There's the connector on the end for the logic board. And there's the hard drive bracket about to come out. It's coming out now. That's very easy. Just pull it out. It's a bit of plastic. And there's the. Uh, infrared sensor board, which is what receives your uh, remote control signals. That's there. Little black square at the top. There we go. Time to fit your SSD. And there's a connector for the infrared board, the logic board. Back soon. Oops. New SSD, Samsung E40 Evo 250 gig. There's the mounting bracket from inside the Mac Mini. It's a plastic bag we don't need it's over there. There's the these rubber grommets go inside these holes. These holes here. These rubber grommets are mounting grommets for your drive, so I'll put those in and come back. So there's your rubber grommets now fitted inside the bracket. And it's time for the SSD to go in. There we go. And the SSD we're going in next. I've fitted the new SATA ribbon cable to the SSD. There we go, you see it there. And then fold the ribbon cable flat against the uh, the rear underside of the SSD. And I'm about to mount it in the bracket. Come back in a second. Goodbye. Your SSD is now in the bracket, ready to go back in the machine. All screwed in nicely. Sitting there, waiting to give you some super speed. So that will then go back inside the machine that way 
And I'll go over the motherboard with the logic board and you'll it'll plug in this plug wall. Plug in the, in the logic board. Back soon. There's an extra step not shown on the internet. This is a little bit of um, adhesive backed copper foil which you stick over the Bluetooth board here. Which is an extra precaution. But apparently when you're using USB 3 drives, external devices and drives and Bluetooth. Sometimes you can get interference because on the same frequency. 2 point something gigahertz I think. Maybe 5 gigahertz I'm not sure. So I put this foil. I stick it over this area here. That's an extra step. Okay, that's the extra copper shielding stuck in place to stop interference. That basically goes on top on, over the Bluetooth board and over the front connector. Whatever that connector connects to, I do not know. So anyway, that's that done. That's an extra part of the kit. I'll see you soon. The SSD in the bracket is back in. The power supply is back in, as you can see. Just about to uh, realign the uh, power connector at the back. So that's all in. Power connector waiting to be connected, as is the airport. Sorry, the uh, infrared sensor cable there. There's the hard drive, the SATA drive. You'll see inside, on the back. If I just, just behind here, there's two metal pegs. One there, and one just there. You can see those. Let's see the one there, and one there. That's where the pegs on the existing hard drive. These two metal pegs here, they'll sit in there, like that. Okay, that's your original drive. Now see that the power socket's back in, with a little metal retainer clip underneath, the little metal tab sticking up to about 45 degrees, and there's your SSD. And now the logic board's going to go back in, connect all the drives, um, do the recovery, sorry, create the um, fusion drive, do the recovery, and uh, then recreate the recovery partition, which I won't explain now because it just confuses you. And then it's done. Bye. So the power supply's back in. The hard drive carrier's back in with the SSD in it. I'm now sliding the logic board back into the Mac Mini and reconnecting the power cable, the infrared cable, uh, the new SATA cable. I'll then put the drive in here, the existing drive. Connect the old SATA cable and we're done. Take the logic board back out because the power supply cable, this cable here, should be tucked under this, uh, let me show you, this black block here, this power supply cable should be underneath there. Then I accidentally didn't leave, I left it hanging out, so I've got to put it back under there. So I thought I'd show you back, in, show you back inside again. All well, logic boards out. There you go. There's your Mac Mini. It's all done. Samsung SSD activated. Let's give it a first boot. Power switch. Okay, good. Yeah, it's going to boot up now. I'm just going to do the uh, software side of it now. Cheers.